So I know today was a little bit heavy and I'm sorry it was necessary. Um, we'll come back to that tomorrow and uh, we'll deal with some of the weak acid, weak base stuff. But we're going to move on to more standard regions level stuff. And this is on page 17 of your notes. We're going to talk about neutralization and titration. So titration is just an application of neutralization. So let's take a look at the top here. It says neutralization reactions are, an important, are important in a lot of different situations. Can you name one where we might be interested in neutralizing excess acid? There are lots of possible answers to this question. I'm going to leave it for you to answer and see what you come up with with your groups tomorrow. So name one where you might be interested in neutralizing excess acid. You can think about um, uh, environment. You can think about biology. Think about you. Anything where you might want to neutralize excess acid. So neutralize, neutralization reactions occur when acids react with, I'm sure this is a huge shock to you, bases. Ooh, I'll try and get funky here. I'll make it underlined also so that insert. There we go. All right. Okay. Now, give an example of each. And then we'll write the neutralization reaction. Normally, I'd have you do this in class. I'm going to do this for you. Example of each. An example of an acid. How many of you were thinking of HCl? I bet you a lot of you. And how about a base? Like maybe sodium hydroxide. What have we been talking about? Well, you mix them up together. It's really like a double replacement reaction. So you get the H and the OH together, which you can leave like that if you want, or you can write it as what it is, which is water. And then look at what's left. You get sodium chloride, right? The Na and the Cl go together. Double replacement reaction, but it's a neutralization. So what do you get? You get water from a neutralization reaction every single time, and you get something called a salt. A, it's not a salt, that's a crime. A salt. And anything that you make is called a, a sorry, salt. Um, definition of a salt, then, is I want you to write it down. So if any reaction between an acid and a base makes water and a salt, it doesn't have to be sodium chloride, what would you define a, sal a salt as? The cation comes from either the acid or the base. Take a look. Here's the cation, positively charged anion. Uh, pff, positively charged ion, cation. Where does it come from? Look in the reactants. And then the anion comes from the other thing. Where does the anion come from? Figure that out. And so from this, you'll find that almost all ionic compounds can be considered salts because you could, in theory, write a reaction between an acid and a base that would produce any ionic compound. Now, there is one neutralization reaction. It's not really a complete neutralization. It's close. It doesn't produce any salts. It's a reaction of hydronium with hydroxide. And the reason why I say it's not really a complete neutralization reaction is because it has ions in it. And you can't really make a bottle full of ions. But if you could, and you had H3O plus and OH minus coming together, what would you get? You'd get water. You have an acid. Oops. You have an acid and a base. You get water and you get, oh wait, the other thing left is also water. So you get two waters. So that's why it doesn't produce any salts. But um, essentially, this is what all neutralization reactions do. Acid plus base equals water and salt. And sometimes in regions review packets or regions questions, we'll actually have it in words. Acid plus base goes to salt and water. Um, sometimes you have to pick it out using the chemical formulas, but one way or another, you should understand that piece of neutralization. That's an important thing. Now, neutralization can be applied by using uh, in a technique called titration. So here we go. It says, what you will notice is that we've written all reactions above in a completely balanced manner. Remember, from pH, which two concentrations have to be completely balanced or equal in order to make a neutral solution? This actually came from class today, and that is that you have to have equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus. they're completely balanced, in other words, if they are completely equal, then the only reaction occurring when you neutralize is really this. This is like the business end of the reaction. It's hydrogen and hydroxide gives water. That's it. 
It's the whole thing. The rest of it is just salt, okay? And that doesn't matter. So this makes sense, right? I mean, it should be neutral. If you have acids and bases that you're adding together in equal quantities, you'll get water. This makes it neutral, right? Yes, yes. Page 18. Now we can do the same thing with acids and bases that we were doing just thinking about concentrations. To get the neutralization perfect, we need to make sure we have the same number of blank of H plus as blank of blank. All right, well, I'll tell you this is OH minus. And then your job tonight is to, what are we trying to get to be equal? Blanks of H plus and blanks of OH minus. When we reach that point, it is called the equivalence point. Something's equivalent. All right, I'll tell you fine. Okay, you didn't already figure it out? Moles. Yeah, I know. They're back again. Ever get a feeling that maybe it's an overarching concept? Well, whatever. Why would we need this? Well, the reason we would need this is let's say we knew how much acid we had, but we wanted to figure out how much base we had. So perfect example. I mean, a classic thing people do is, um, you know, it's not like, it's not just like sleuthing. It's not like, oh, I know and you don't know. No, it's more like, um, you know how uh, when you do, um, oh, when you, when, you, when you work out too long and you get that lactic acid burn from anaerobic respiration. Let's say you had some sort of yeast doing that anaerobic respiration. You're making some lactic acid, but you didn't know how much. Well, so you know you had lactic acid, but you could use titration. You could add some base and see how much it took to neutralize it. And then from that, you could calculate how much lactic acid you must have had. So it's not like, you know, it's just for 10th grade science experiments where I know the concentration of something and you don't, because that is the lab we're going to do. But you can imagine applying it to a biology experiment, or sometimes I had friends who had re reactants that would go bad over time, so they'd have to titrate them right before using them to see how much they still had. So the reason why you really need this is to find the concentration of a compound. Generally, you know the compound, but the concentration is unknown. That involves, you know, that's the part you have to write, you have to press pause, press pause. This will give you a way to determine how much acid or base you have in your sample. In order to help us out, what could we use to give us information about the pH? What could we visibly use? What could we visibly use? to see whether our stuff is acidic or basic or neutral. All right. Well, I'm going to leave that blank for you to fill out. All right. If we neutralize a weak acid, this is pre-IB, just very briefly. If we neutralize a weak acid with a strong base and we have the same number of moles of each, will we have a pH 7 solution of a weak acid and a strong base? Will it be pH 7? The answer is no, it will not be pH 7. Strong acid, strong base, yes. Weak acid, strong base, no. Now, use your crazy intuition and tell me whether the range of pH will be above 7 or below 7. If we take a weak acid and a strong base, we have the same number of moles of each. And then I want you to answer the same question for a weak base and a strong acid. It'll be above 7 or below 7. It won't be 7 because they're not the same strength. If they're the same number of moles of each, it will not be pH 7. So titration, definition is the use of a standard solution to find the concentration of another solution. Doesn't actually have to be acids and bases. We're only going to use acids and bases, but it doesn't have to be acids and bases. Now a standard solution is the con is the solution of known concentration. Endpoint I'm going to leave for class because a lot of the endpoint has to do with this blank that you filled out further up the page. So we're going to get there. But here's what a titration might look like on a graph of pH versus the amount of base added to an acidic solution. Let's look at the, it's a very long x-axis title, but let's take a look. You have the milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH added to 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. It looks like I'm about to get chopped off. So I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to finish this up in just a little bit. We're only going to get to the bottom of page 19. So it's not going to take us long, but I'm going to get cut off. So you'll have to watch two videos. Sorry. <laughs>